through this year the rock will take you to the promised land he was following them the rock was following them anybody that came against the rock was broken into pieces anybody who stood on the, the way was grounded to powder they needed water the rock provided water for them on their way to the promised land and this year we are arriving at the promised land as a commission all through this year the rock will take you to your place joyfully lift up your hand give glory to god celebrate him again this morning hallelujah give him glory give him glory give him glory give him glory as you do begin to declare enough is enough enough is enough this is my service enough is enough enough is enough hallelujah in jesus precious name we are praying the end of enough is enough is rest that is the ultimate goal of this service enough is enough i want to have my rest Somebody said, enough is enough, I want to have my rest. <laughs> and today, being the seventh day, is your day of rest. <laughs> Seven connotes Sabbath. The seventh day, the Lord rested from all his works. This is the seventh day of the 21 days of prayer and fasting. Say with me, I must enter into my rest. Say it one more time. Raise your voice and declare it as you have said it. Yes. Mention the areas where you will find rest. I must enter into my rest maritally. I must enter into my rest in fruitfulness. I must enter into my rest in my job, in my career, in my project in my appointment in my promotion in my health i must enter into my rest i must enter into my rest in my family restful restful peaceful restful peaceful thank you lord in jesus precious name Father, send me your word that will put an end to every satanic incursion. My enough is enough word. My word leading to my rest. Just pray that one more prayer before we take our seat. Send me your word that will bring me to my restful place. That will give me rest on every side. Send me your word. Enough is enough. Send me your word. Say to me, O oh Lord, thy word, O oh Lord, is settled in heaven. Hallelujah. In Jesus' wonderful name. Please turn to your neighbors to your right. Welcome them into God's presence and take your seat. Announce to them enough is enough. It will answer in your life today. Give God a big hand. Let's celebrate him. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. And let us all together say amen and amen. The prophetic focus for this month has been captioned, prayer and fasting empowers fulfillment of prophecies. Will that happen in your life? Say amen to it. Your prayer and fasting shall not be in vain. In the precious name of Jesus. I want to specially commend every one of us for your zeal and drive. In the last seven days, when we commence this prayer and fasting, it shows very clearly that you are driving towards something. It's so evident looking around in the congregation there is 
spiritual focus spiritual determination i must experience a change in my life i want to commend you on the behalf of jesus christ the head of the church for this eagerness you have been praying kingdom advancement prayer god is not taking note of everything he has not asked you to seek him in vain the gains of fasting in this season shall be made manifest in your life however it's not enough to start a thing continuity is crucial continuity is the secret of impact this all continued acts chapter 2 verse 42 they continued in prayer and fasting they continued steadfastly not casually continue maintain the temple maintain the fervency remain at the boiling point maintain the flame the zest the zeal these all continued they continued steadfastly verse 47 they continued they continued and as they did god was visiting them acts chapter 1 verse 14 the same language these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the woman mary the mother of jesus and with the brethren so me i will continue what will you do tomorrow all through the week so don't allow weariness around you and that's why you have the fellowship with the brethren covenant hour of prayer 5 30 a.m every morning go and stay among the brethren for fellowship to put more fire inside you two are better than one get prayer partner that we're praying together with keep the fire burning in your soul not slothful in business far bent in spirit as you keep serving the lord romans chapter 12 verse 11 keep the fire burning you will soon get there they continued pentecost came you will continue until fire falls this time around the enemy shall finally be put under your feet this time around all wool will not allow you to rest will be laid to rest this time around you must rise this year will be your year of testimonies unlimited you will not only testify after this prayer and fasting you will become a living testimony lift up your hand pray in the holy ghost just charge yourself some more get yourself recharged that's why we are here this morning to recharge our spiritual batteries recharge yourself recharge yourself recharge yourself hallelujah in jesus precious name our teaching every sunday for this month is titled understanding the blessedness of prayer and fasting and we're looking at part one b isaiah chapter 58 verses 6 to 14 is our focus the blessedness of prayer and fasting what are the blessings that comes from fasting you lose the bands of wickedness you undo the heavy burden during fasting burdens are lifted the oppressed go free yokes are destroyed that's what happens when we engage in fasting our life breaks forth in obscurity our health springs forth speedily you've had all kinds of testimonies people receiving their healing as an aftermath of prayer and fasting we enjoy divine guidance which leads to greatness when we fast we become as watered garden dryness is terminated our bones are made fat we are satisfied in drought all of these blessings will become your testimony i thought i'm still praying for someone here 
make that amen your own right now. We are reminded again this morning that every commandment of God is ordained for our profiting. First John chapter 5 verse 3. God's instruction never leads to destruction. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. They are not grievous. God commands you not to grieve you. No. He commands you to make your life gracious. All scripture is given by inspiration. Direct from God. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 and 17. And is profitable. God's word are capsules of profit. Inside every word that God commands is your profit. You don't follow God and suffer losses. Obeying God always leads to profit. Obeying God always leads to profit. Obeying God always leads to profit obeying God is to your advantage and one of such commands is the command to fast fasting is a command with specific benefits in view fasting is not optional the scripture makes it clear that there are days of fasting. It also spells out very clearly when ye fast, when ye pray, when ye fast, when ye pray. Matthew 6 6, 17 and 18. But you, when you fast, when you fast, when you fast, so fasting is a commandment of God with prophets in view. This is the reason why we have to be very careful not to sell out your birthright. Fasting is one way to secure your birthright. There are things you can never assess in the world of the spirit except by fasting. Jesus said so. There are heights you can never reach except by fasting. Matthew 17, 19 to 21. Let's get to see that. After Jesus cast out some devils, then came his disciples to him and said, Master, why could we not cast out the devil? And Jesus said, when I was praying and fasting, you were sleeping. That's why you couldn't cast out the devil. Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as, grain, as, as, as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove ends to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. However, the kind of case I treated will not listen to your faith without addition of prayer and fasting. There are three forces required for triumph. Number one, faith. Faith is the arrowhead for victory. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all fairy darts of the wicked one. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. So faith is the arrowhead. Faith is the arrowhead. But there are certain situations that faith will require prayer as a backup. Backup. 
So you pray. And there are certain other situations that faith and prayer cannot handle alone. So you do second backup with fasting. Faith, prayer, and fasting. Three combined forces. When these three are online, Satan can never say no. They don't come too often, but when they come, you must be prepared to deal with them with the force of fasting. Please listen. Jesus was born to be savior, but he was limited to the carpenter's workshop. And when he saw that time was going, and he was yet to enter into the fullness of his assignment, he went to pray and to fast. Luke chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. And after the fasting, verse 14, after the fasting, before the fasting, he was in the workshop. After the fasting, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And after he returned, there was a breakout. There went out of him, of fame of him, through all the region, from carpenter's workshop to all the region. There are many people sitting here, you are doing business, a massacre, when you should have branches in all nations of the hearts. Why? Satan has put limit on you. Say with me, enough is enough. <laughs> That's why we are fasting. To break the barriers. There are pastors who are meant to be pastoring thousands and tens of thousands of a church. But he's limited to pastoring a church of 70 people for 10 years. And he's watching. He's still eating and drinking. He can't see signs and wonders. Yet he's not bothered. Up until that time, there was no record that Jesus performed any miracle. But he returned in the power of the Spirit. And he's still. Push every barrier that will not let you move is broken from this prayer and fasting. <laughs> Academic barrier over you or your children is broken right now. <laughs> Marital barriers is hereby removed. <laughs> this is why you must take this fasting very serious. Don't eat up your destiny. There is time for everything. There is time to be denied of food. There is time to grow lean so that you can become fat. If you see my photographs in my 20s, like broom, broom, all the bones on the neck out. I was paying the price. If you pay today, you will play tomorrow. If you play today, you will pay tomorrow. Make your choice. Especially young people that are here. Young people, sit down. Do what Paul did in fastings often. In fastings often. Fast in preparation for your future. Fast. For a young man at 20, at 25, at 30, eating breakfast, lunch, dinner, breakfast. Nobody does that and secures a future. No. Woe to you, old man, when your child behaves like a baby, eating at every opportunity. You find that in Ecclesiastes chapter 10. And blessed are thou, O land, when your king is among the nobles, 
who eat for strength and not for pleasure. Esau was eating for pleasure. Everything was gullible. Bless Adar, O land. When your king is the son of the nobles and your princes eat in due season, in due season, for strength and not for drunkenness. Don't eat up your destiny. Tell food enough. Turn your pots upside down. Lock your store. Tell your stomach, keep quiet. We're in business right now. Tell your mouth, close. Close. Your eyes are turning. Say, yes, let the eye turn for a while. So that he can see clearly. You see, until your eyes turn today, he cannot see tomorrow. Your destiny will not be destroyed like Saul's, like Esau's destiny. Now, quickly, while we are fasting, what must be our approach in order to make it profitable? Quickly, we we'll look at six points. Biblical approach to profitable fasting. Number one, when you are fasting, clearly define your objectives. Why am I engaging in this fast? Number one, number two, number three. If you are yet to do that, this is not late. We have just gone one thought by the end of today. Write down, what do I want to achieve by this fasting? Is it divine intervention like Esther? Or divine direction like Ezra? Or for God to take over my battle as in the case of Jehoshaphat? Esther chapter 4 verses 15 to 17 there was a pending destruction on the jews and esther um, esther bade them return mordecai this answer because mordecai sent a message to him they will destroy us and destroy you you cannot escape and he said tell mordecai go gather together all the jews that are present in shushan and fast ye for me very clear objective and that means don't eat or drink for three days, night or day. I also am my maiden will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. That is, I am going to take a risk. The step I want to take is not allowed by law. But I don't care. If I perish, let me perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all the, that Esther commanded in their days. A brief explanation you don't appear before the king anyhow even if you are the queen there are set orders that must be followed meanwhile if she didn't act immediately destruction was going to catch up, take over, I mean, catch up with them there are perhaps some of us sitting there there are pending troubles ahead of you you don't know how to escape take the risk and then in chapter 5 verse 2 as Esther appeared before the king. Contrary to being condemned, the king stretched the golden scepter to her. She obtained favor. So fasting created room for favor in the sight of the king. So your fasting can go ahead of you to change people's perspective towards you. Those who don't like you, they begin to like you. The veil on you that makes people to despise you, to hate you, to dislike you, is removed. The king beckoned to her. Oh, I've been waiting to see you. And that's how they escape destruction. Maybe you are seeking divine guidance. Ezra chapter 8, verses 21 to 23. And I proclaim a fast there objectively at the river harbor for what purpose that we may afflict ourselves before Lord our god to seek of god to seek from god a right way for us divine guidance which is key to human greatness for our little ones and for our substance lord i don't know why things are working this way am i on the right path especially at the beginning of the year last year two years ago all the things you did went back bankrupt you need guidance. The race is not to the swift, the battle is not to the strong. Guidance. Isaac was guided in one year 
he became the prince of business. He became stronger economically than the whole nation because he was guided by God. Lord, I don't want to miss my path. What business do I do this year? Lord, I don't want to miss my step. Should I go ahead with this relationship? Every day there is fight. Should I go ahead with this relationship? Practical steps. As a pastor, if you are here, what do I do this year to make the church to grow? Divine guidance. They prayed and God answered them. Down to verse 23. Number three, three great nations came against Jehoshaphat. He turned to the right, to the left. There was no help. And Jehoshaphat feared. Listen to me. Everybody fears at one time or the other. The word fear means to be overwhelmed. He was overwhelmed by what he saw. And in the midst of that, he set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judea. For what? For God to send help. And among the prayer he prayed, he said, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are on you. And God said, if that is the case, this is what you need to do. And we know the story down to 24. Every enemy of theirs was scattered. They didn't need to shoot an arrow. God fought for them. This year, God will fight for you. I thought you were saying a loud amen to that. What will God do for you this year? Say it again. What will God do for you this year? Through your prayer and fasting, what will happen to you? God will fight for you. That is why you have to take fasting serious. Last night, a former staff of ours called me. He said, today I remember how you used to tell us to take this thing very serious. He said, I remember one day you led us in three days of prayer and fasting. He said, I was almost dead. But today I see the effect in my life. Then he was referring to another staff. He said, in those days when we called for prayer and fasting, he will call him and say, hey, come on here. I want to take Chapman first. So he will mix Coke with Fanta for Chapman. He will buy shawarma and eat. Today, the person I'm talking about, you can't find him anywhere again. He has eaten up his destiny. He ate up his destiny. Don't take this thing light. Be serious. I beg you again, especially you young people. Young people. Don't toy with your future with the present pleasure. Take it serious today if you want to enjoy it glorious tomorrow. Bishop Oedeko didn't arrive where he is now by accident. There are mountains he climbed. There are rooms in which he shut up himself. There are moments when stomach became empty so that you can become full of God. We didn't arrive at where we are today by accident. And that's what we are telling you. If you want to get to where we are, follow the steps that we followed you will surely get there number two when you are fasting prepare to engage your heart in prayer god focuses on your heart more than your mouth your cry is important but your heart is more important proverbs 16 1 prepare your heart it determines the answer that god will give to you Jeremiah 20, 21, engage your heart. Jeremiah 29, 13, seek the Lord with your heart. And you will find them when you search for him with all of your heart. Quickly, how do you do that? Avoid distraction. Distraction of the eye, distraction of the mind. I always recommend for people what Jesus said. He said, when you pray, go to your closet. He said, shut the door. And the door to your body is your eyes. Pray in places where you will not be distracted by what you see physically. Shut your eyes. Don't pray with your television on. Don't pray with your telephone in front of you. They will distract your attention. If you are not owing anybody, you can shut your telephone. So nobody will ask you, I was calling you, you didn't answer me. Shut the distraction of the mind by praying in the Holy Ghost. You see, when your voice is loud, the noises of the, the enemy will be down. It will be low. Pray with concentration. Put your heart together. 
That's how to pray engaging your heart. Number three, when you are fasting, don't fail to confess and forsake your sins. I do that often. Because nobody is bigger than error. You know, sin has several departments. It may not be fornication. It may not be adultery. It may not be anything that defies the body. But it may be things that defies your spirit man. He said, let us cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. Contaminants of your spirit. Heavenly Father, I receive your forgiveness from my errors. Wash me by the blood of Jesus. I pray that prayer done in this fasting. Don't self-justify yourself. You know, I don't commit adultery. You know, I don't lie. But there are secret, there are what David described as secret sins. And he also described also as presumptuous sin. The things, the errors, the errors you committed, the disobedience that you engage in. God told you to go out for outreach, you didn't go, it is sin. So you need to ask God to forgive you. Your fellow brother, you need to that to pray for you. didn't pray for him. Now, evil has overtaken him. You need to pray, Lord, forgive me. As pastor, the message you needed to preach, you didn't preach. Father, I'm very sorry. So, what am I saying? All of us are liable to errors. So, you need to pray for forgiveness of sin and for the cleansing by the blood of Jesus. 1 John 1, 9 to 10, is faithful and just to forgive us. Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2, sin is hindrance to our connection with God. Psalm 68, verse 18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. He that hideth his sin shall not prosper. You find that in Proverbs. But he that confesseth and forsaketh them shall obtain mercy. You have to confess and you have to forsake. Lord, forgive me of my drunkenness. And I receive your help not to go back there. You, for, you, you confess and forsake. Many confess, but they don't forsake. Lord, forgive me for all my sin. But after this fasting, I will go back there. Because I've not forsaken it. I've confessed, but I've not forsaken. That's the way many people believe, behave. They go back to their vomit. After this prayer and fasting, you will not go back to your vomit. I thought you were saying amen to that. Number four, we must come reminding God of his word. God hears our words in prayer. The quality of prayer is determined by the content of the word. Quality of prayer is determined by the content of the word. Daniel was praying in chapter 10 and the angel came and said I have come for your words your words I have come for your words Bartimaeus cried to get Jesus attention but did not get the healing without speaking the word without speaking the word so while you are crying to go oh god oh god oh god oh god god is waiting for you to say what you have when you cry he stands yes i'm here my son i'm here my daughter what do you want me to do for you then words words that's why we're recommended that during the fasting you must be studying the word so you can look at appropriate word what killed goliath was the stones that david carefully selected which is the word of god Isaiah 43, verse 26. Bring forth your strong reasons. Bring forth your strong reasons. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. In another scripture, it said, Bring forth your strong reasons. Bring forth your strong reasons. Isaiah 41, 21. Bring forth your strong reasons. Let us plead together. Let us talk together. Those are the things that God is listening to. Number five, 
you must engage in kingdom advancement prayer as priority. Before you mention your personal issue, push the issue of the kingdom before God. Push the issue of your brethren before God. We have had testimonies of people who said, I wanted who to marry, but I decided to be praying for my other brethren in the church who are looking forward to this miracle. We have had testimonies of people who said, I am looking for fruit of the womb, but I started praying for others who need it. Like Job, 42.10, he prayed for his friends and God gave him double. God gave him twice as much. When you pray for yourself, you have one. When you pray for others, you have twice. Matthew 6, 9 and 10, when you pray, before you ask for daily bread, ask for kingdom advancement. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on other cities in heaven. After that, you can ask, give us this day our daily bread. Your bread is guaranteed when you pray for the kingdom. Your addition is guaranteed when you are addicted to kingdom advancement prayer. Addiction to God is key to addition from God. Seek you for the kingdom of God and the treasures and all other things shall be added to you. And number six, you should engage in praying in the spirit. Praying in the language of the Holy Spirit is the error-free path. There may be mistake in your language, but there is no error in the language of the spirit. It is the most accurate way to pray. It is the most tireless way to pray. Those who pray in the language of the Spirit are never tired of praying. Those who pray in an unknown tongue. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, chapter 14, verse 2, chapter 14, verse 2, and chapter 14, I mean, chapter 14, verse 2, and verses 14 and 15. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. No man knows what he's saying, but in the spirit he is speaking mystery. When you pray in the language of the Holy Ghost, you are praying in mysteriously. For I will pray in an unknown tongue. When I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayed. So the, the real prayer is praying in the language of the Holy Ghost. My understanding is all fruitful. Therefore, I will pray with the spirit. I will also pray with my understanding. I will sing in the spirit. And I will also sing in my understanding. Praying in the language of the Spirit. That is a language Satan cannot understand. He cannot circumvent it. If you pray in the Gala, he knows it very well. You pray in the Doma, that's his specialty. Amen. <laughs> He's, Satan is specialist in linguistic. So you can't confuse him with the Lord. Lord, Lord, I thank you because you are very faithful. You see, I just thank you. You can speak in New York or New Delhi language. It doesn't move him. <laughs> you can speak Queen English language. It doesn't move him. What moves him? Le kalu shaken teche, mamasika galat gotoshki katana zai 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 zai. He said, "This one we no day there. We no fit in this place." You speak over and above him. Somebody say loud, amen. amen. Raise your voice and speak in that language. Just a while. Speak in that language. Speak in that language. Get yourself charged. When you pray in that language, you get charged spiritually. Glory to God. In Jesus' precious name. Say with me, enough is enough. What is the root of today's declaration? 2 Samuel chapter 24 verse 16. 2 Samuel 24 16. When the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, when evil spirits stretch for their hands to destroy your family, to destroy your business, look at what the Lord will do. The Lord changed his mind concerning that evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, as God is saying this morning, it is enough. Who is saying it? Who is saying it? Is it the pastor? This one is direct from the Lord. Enough it's enough. God is saying to you, over that issue of your life that is endangering your life, threatening your existence, that issue of health, you've received medical report that you have a few more days or a few more months to live, God said, no! Get off your hand, Satan. It is enough. So, mate, it is enough. I didn't hear you very well. God has said it. What are you saying to it? 
let it show in your expression right now. God is saying to you, it is enough. What are you saying back to him? He said, it is enough. And what happened? Get back to that passage. Stay now your hand. And the angel, in response to God's command, withdrew. For who said and the coming to pass when the Lord of hosts has not commanded it? When God issues command, who can say no? Who can say no? Nothing contrary will disobey what God has said concerning you. I'm not sure you said amen to that. Let your amen be worth your life. In Nahum chapter 1 verse 9, he said, Affliction shall not arise the second time. Whatever has been threatening your life before, you will look around for them from today, you will never find them again. John 19 30, Jesus said, It is finished. In the passage we read, God said, It is enough. In John 19 30, Jesus said, It is finished. Either way, it's enough, it is finished, it is enough. It is finished. It is enough. It is finished. It is finished. Your warfare is accomplished. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 and 2. Speak it comfortably unto my people. Tell them their warfare is over. I'm saying to you this morning that struggle of your life is over. That battle of your life is over. That abandoned project is enough to it. That health challenge, it is enough to it. That family crisis, it is enough to it. I want you to look at it. All your spiritual fathers are having settled home. You shouldn't have crisis. You shouldn't have crisis. Bishop Oedeko, settled home. My co-laborer here, Bishop Aramon, settled home. Yesterday, by the grace of God, my wife and I clocked 33 years in our marriage. Settled. 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 You will never see crisis in your family again. Never. You will never beg for food again. You will never nurse any of your children for sickness again. Untimely death in your family is over from now. <laughs> Celebration galore begins from your home today. <laughs> Only good news will be coming away from today. <laughs> Shout it loud, it is enough. <laughs> if you have your list of it is enough, I want you to bring it down, put it on the floor. If you have not written one, I want you to write something now. Enough. That area where the devil is threatening you, academics, business, career, frustration, no promotion, no new job, remain on the same spot, continuous miscarriages, enough. 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 Say so me, enough. God says so. You too should say so. Say me again, it's enough. If you want to put an end to all this satanic harassment, what do you do? Number one, make a choice to serve the Lord. Make a choice to serve the Lord. The premise on which Israel came out of Egypt is service. Exodus 4, 22-23. As you make a commitment to serve God, God takes over the battle. Thou shalt say to Pharaoh, this is a commandment to Moses. Thus share the Lord, thus share the Lord. Israel is my son. You are God's son, even my firstborn. And I say unto you, let my son go. Let my people go, that he may serve me. But if you refuse to let him go as he is serving me, I will kill your son. Anyone that wants to tamper with you when you are serving God, God will kill them. Is it me who says so? God said, I will kill them. I will kill them. 
Your duty is to serve. God's duty is to kill them. Your duty is to serve. But serving God is the choice you have to make. You have to make the choice. God does not force people to serve him. Like Joshua 24, 15, as for me and my house, we have made our choice. We will serve the Lord. How many of you will serve God? Say to him, I will serve you, Lord. Our covenant commitment to serve the Lord is gateway to our all-round rest. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verses 12 to 15, the people made a vow to serve the Lord. And in verse 15, God gave them rest. Those who serve God are entitled to rest. So for you to enjoy full liberty, entering into the promised land this year, there are two things, basically, God requires from you. Number one, love God with all of your heart and serve him with all of your strength. Love him. Serve him. When you love God, everything works together for your good. Romans 8, 28. When you love God, he makes your enemies to bow to you. Deuteronomy chapter 11, come with me quickly, verses 22 to 25. For if you shall diligently keep all these commandments that I command you, to do them and to love God, to love God. Say to me, I love God. And how do you prove to, to love God? To walk in all his ways, to cleave to him, to identify with him. To stay close to him, even when people mock you. Then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you. You will not struggle to drive them. God will drive them. He will drive them out of your way. Every devil blocking your way, this year, God will drive them away from you. Anyone occupying the office and the position that belongs to you, God will drive them away. If you will love him. If you walk in his ways, he will drive them away. Then will the Lord drive out all these nations before you, and you shall possess greater nations and mightier than her that, that you than yourself. Every place where only the sole of your feet shall tread upon shall be yours. Say amen to that. Yeah. They got not the land by their strength, but by their, the favor of God. God drove some people out of Canaan land to give it to us. He drove out some people out of Goshen to give it to us. Otherwise, how do you explain it? There is no way you can get this large expanse of land without litigation. But not one. Not one. Why? God gave it to us. Why? Because we love him. Love for God is the end to human struggles. Love for God is the end to all human struggles. I don't struggle for anything else. I just love God and everything I need comes my way. Everything I need comes my way. I don't struggle for anything. Everything I need just comes my way. An end has come to your struggle. Love for God is the end of human struggles. Love God. Serve God. You shall serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread and your water. He will take sickness away from the midst of you. Just serve him. Yours is to serve. His is to bless. He will bless your bread. He will bless your water. To the extent that he will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Somebody say amen to that. You will no longer beg for anything. Yet, you will no longer lack anything. Keep loving God. Keep serving God. Choose to serve the Lord. Number two, react to your situation. Don't settle where you are. Don't settle for faith. F-A-T-E. Don't say, you see, maybe this is a cross I have to carry. Which cross are you carrying? Jesus already carried the cross. What cross are you carrying? What will you carry on for? 
I can't understand why this situation has not changed. You don't have to understand that it has not changed. Start reacting. Start reacting. Let God see that you don't like what is happening around you. God's servant Bishop Odebo said, what you don't want, don't watch. Don't watch your situation. Don't watch that barrenness. Do something about it. Did you hear the testimony this morning from this precious daughter from choir? The husband will just be falling. The husband will be fainting. Did every test. They can't find anything wrong. He said, then I have to change gear. Tell your neighbor, change gear. React to your situation. React to your situation. She changed the gear. Brought her to a servant of God. Laid us on him. And that was the end of it. Don't watch us. Don't die cheaply. Don't die. Even if you would die, die fighting. Die fighting. No! I shall not die but live. Declare the works of the Lord. You found devil enough of your act, 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 activity in my family. Let every husband whose wife is said to be buried, get back, lay hands on your wife, and tell your wife, I didn't marry you to be buried. I married you to produce children for me. Why, in a meeting like this one day, a young man who had married for a while, and the wife didn't conceive, after the service, he met me. He said, I'm traveling to Joss. I said, what are you going to do? He said, I'm going to impregnate my wife. <laughs> he got charged. Enough is enough. Show me enough is enough. Nine months after, the effect of the pregnancy showed. Amen. Enough. You have to react to mental failure. You have to react to business crisis. You have to react to lack of promotion in your work. Many of us are too settled. That's why nothing is moving. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. When our church started in Kaduna, it was not growing. God's servant engaged in prayer and fasting. How can I continue this way? If I go at this rate, this church will not grow more than 100 people in 10 years. You have what it takes. Start reacting. React in your mind. React in your language. React in your physical appearance. There are people when you see them, you see dullness all around them. There are people you see spiritual sharpness around them. There are people when you pray, you know that this one is going somewhere. There are others when they pray, ah, it's not going anywhere. They say pray. They say pray loud. <laughs> they say pray. Even when he doesn't know the right thing to say, God said, this one wants something. Let me help him out. Let me help him out. Don't you see even a family? Two children. One is very casual. The other is very serious. The other is very serious. Mommy, I want food. The other one is crying. Mommy, do you have food there? Mommy said, wait for us. <laughs> the food is cooking. The other one is crying. It's time. And the mother says, before the food is ready, take bread, take the skin. Let me rest first. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. React. Don't be docile. Don't be dormant. Don't be sluggish. If you don't want to end as rubbish. React. Bartimaeus was in the colony of blind people. He was not the only one there that day. Because blind people always sit together in the same place. They give them dress to identify them. In their days, there are dresses for blind people. There are dresses for crippled people. So you can identify them when you see them. So they were all there. But when Bartimaeus heard that look, that man that makes people see is passing. He said, is that so? Is that so? I can't see. But you told me it's passing. He started shouting and screaming and removed his clothes so that his identity can change from other people. And Jesus stood right in front and said, bring him here. They were holding him down. He removed his dress. I must get there. Jesus said, this man needs help. He doesn't know how to say it, but he needs help. By his reaction, he needs help. You have to react in such a way that God knows you are looking for help. React. Don't be docile. Don't sit down like Popo. 
looking for who will carry you. Jump up. Take your bed and go home. Somebody say, <laughs> You know, even sleep catches you depending on how you sit. If you sit, relax. Sleep say, I think I have a candidate here. If you sit upright. That's why in classroom they tell you, sit up. And those who sit up, sleep cannot catch them. You find somebody either shaking his head or chewing something. He doesn't want to sleep. But another person is relaxed. He says, God knows I'm tired. God knows I've tried. <laughs> because if that, that's how you die there. <laughs> so I want you to pray. When it is time to pray, you will take that paper. Enough is enough. Yes. God said enough. Yes. Our pastor said enough. Yes. I'm saying enough. Yes. That devil must bow to you today. Yes. That devil must bow to you today. Yes. Finally, take advantage of the prophetic grace upon this commission. The hour has come to liberate the world from all oppressions of the devil. God told the servant Bishop Odepo, and I'm sending you through the preaching of the word of faith to undertake this task. Get ready. Nobody under oppression will pass through these gates back home with their oppression. Your crying and weeping shall be transferred to the devil today. Wave your hand and thank God. Wave your hand and thank God. No more delay. No more stagnation. No more confusion. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Quickly, our time is running. You are seated here. You know you are not born again. You have to first of all say enough to sin. You know how you struggle through the years past? How you struggle with sin. You struggle with drunkenness. You struggle with some of those bad habits. Hidden open and today you are telling the devil leave me alone i am not your messenger i belong to god god created me you cannot bastardize my life this evil habit enough somebody's heart is crying i can feel it right now i can feel where you are your soul is crying for help and we want to pray together with you everybody that wants to be free from sin unrighteousness Things that hold you down that you don't like. You too, you don't like it. You know you don't like it. You want to be free this morning. Shall we pray together? Wherever you are, I want you to stand to your feet. Come to the altar. Let's pray. There are individuals here, you don't even know what to do with your life. Everything looks confusing. Everything looks, it's like you are just in darkness. You want to be free. Already some people are coming. I don't know what you are still there sitting down there for. I don't know why you are still sitting down when others are leaving you behind. Don't wait for me to beg you. Don't wait for anybody to beg you. You're on the gallery. Your life is upside down. Zigzag. That's how you have been going. Won't you be free? Will you run your life this year the way you ran it last year? With failure? With confusion? With addiction? All the money you gathered last year, you wasted it. Wasted it on, you know, whatever evil that you are engaged in. Engage in pornography, lesbianism, lesbianism, and all of the kinds of stuff that you do. This morning you must be free. I know the Spirit of God is telling you to come. Don't harden your heart there. Don't try to justify yourself. Don't say, you see, eh, I'm trying my best. I'm not telling you about trying your best. I'm telling you about liberty in Jesus. Come out quickly. Come out quickly. Come out quickly. You can be free. Don't leave your back behind. Don't leave your Bible behind. Don't leave your post behind. Don't leave your telephone behind. Thank you, Lord. Now, what I'm telling you is real. Yesterday, 9th of January, became 44 years when I gave my life to Jesus. Amen. As a teenager, I surrendered my life to Jesus. 1977. January 9th, in an evening crusade. I can't forget that. I can't forget that. I can't remember the message that got me saved, but I saw a force moving me there. I was religious before then. Perhaps like many of you seated here are religious. I was in the choir. I was very busy. I thought I knew God, but I saw the emptiness inside me. I gave my life to Jesus. I know this thing is real. Otherwise, I will not call you to respond to it. Wherever you are seated, 
you are still watching me. The Spirit of God is touching you to come out. Don't hesitate. Don't harden your heart. It is a call you will never regret. Wherever you are seated, stand up. Young people, young ladies, young men, don't waste your life. Stand up. Like I did 44 years ago. You can do that right now. You can do that right now. I know I am talking to not less than 20 more people who are seated there. Don't ask, must I go out? That's how I went out that day. And I've never needed to go back to sin. Don't harden your heart. Don't justify yourself. You are already backsliding and you know it. Stand up right now. You are saying, oh, this man will soon be tired and keep quiet. I will not keep quiet if it is for you today. Stand up right now. Take that step right now. Church, your big hand for Jesus. Many are still coming. They are still coming. They are still coming. Because Jesus wants to save you today. Today is your day. Not tomorrow. Today is your day. All of you who are still coming, hasten your step down here quickly. God bless you mightily in the name of Jesus. All of my good friends here, what a day. You are making a decision you will never regret today. Put your right hand on your heart and pray this prayer with me right now. Say with me, Lord Jesus, please have mercy on me. Forgive my sins. Wash them away by the blood of Jesus. Make me your child. From today, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Write my name in the book of life and give me your power to follow you all the days of my life. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that the sins of these beloved ones be forgiven and their names written in the book of life. No devil shall be able to take them back from you. In Jesus' wonderful name. Are you glad you prayed the prayer with me? God bless you. With a smile on your face, can you say, I am now born again? God bless you. Please go with the officials as they guide you from the middle to my right and from this other side to the left. Clap your hands some more, church. Hallelujah. Rise up with your list of enough is enough.